Oh, hello, guys. Welcome to the show. You know what I mean? The weekend is over, okay? And we're a little disgusted by that. But um, I think things will be made a little bit brighter today by taking a look at one of our favorite goofballs, one of our favorite dipshits, one of our favorite sh- nuts. He's a goon. He's a goofball. He's a goober. Oh. Doing this. Jordan, Jordy K. Timberlake. What is the guy's name? Jordan T. Peterston. Peterstein. Peterstein. Oh, thank God. Okay, this is one of these Jordy inspirational clips. Okay, these clips, they really make us go like this. Because these are what we call moving. Moving! Whoa! These are very moving and... God. God is that which calls you What's to make God? the appropriate sacrifices and calls you on it when oh you God. don't. And try to escape wow. that and see what happens. You know perfectly well. Oh, we're bringing a lot of emotion to the table here. Also, where, <laughs> where are you? Where are you? You know, I mean, the only thing that this conjures to mind is, yes, yeah, sir, you can't stand on that. You can't stand on the ancient ruins exhibit. Sir, that's why those ropes are there in front of it, sir. Sir, stop yelling. Perfectly well, that that's a pathway to hell. And you might say, I don't Amazing. believe in hell. And I would say, that means you don't know anything. Wow. I don't believe in hell. That means you don't know anything. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm lost. Which way to exit the museum, please? I mean, really, what's the thinking behind this? You know? Like, well, what's the thinking behind... I'm a living part of history. Oh, and I'm not retweeting Fox News clips. I'm like Marcus Aurelius. <laughs> I mean, this is the problem. If you're like a well-adjusted young man, you know, you have friends, people like you, you're popular, you're probably not going to be that attracted to Jordy Peterson. But if you are, you're like, I'm lost. I'm lost. I'm weird. No one likes me. You're probably going to find Jordy Peterson, and he's going to make everything a thousand times worse for you. Because this is the most socially unintelligent man. I'm in front of ruins! I'm like one of the gladiators! Like Russell Crowe! Ever heard of him? I consider myself a gladiator of the keyboard on Twitter! Oh, this poor guy. This poor guy. This poor old man. This poor old Canadian man. You know, well, I don't know what's his problem. He's got a lot of problems. You know, they sound sound like this. But um, if only that were the funniest thing with this poor guy. I mean, he's definitely staying in the spotlight, this guy. But uh, over the weekend, you know, there was this very viral story that a lot of people were talking about where this um, this moron, Steven Crowder. I've recorded three people on phone calls in my life. This guy who knew that the comedy career wasn't going to work out. So he's like, I'll say stupid things on behalf of billionaires. But for a couple days, for a day or two or whatever it was, we... We didn't know who he was talking about. Some big right-wing company, the only possible one, the Daily Wire. He didn't need to name it. But in that time before he said who he was talking about, Jordy Peterstone apparently tweeted this. Stephen Crowder on the hypocrisy of the, quote, conservative legacy media. And he put a link. And this poor old bastard, this poor old bastard, Jordy Peterman, he works for them. The Daily Wire backed up a money truck. You know. To his, you know, puppet suit factory or wherever he lives. They backed up a money truck to him (laughs) for him to churn out stupid videos. So when it turned out that Stephen Crowder was talking about the Daily Wire, he's like, "Uh oh, Uh oh, Uh oh, Uh, this has been deleted now, apparently. (laughs) According to all the sources I could find, this has now been deleted. Uh, Again, this poor guy. Not so not only did he take down that original tweet, like, I'm pissing off the boss. <laughs> Not only did he take down the original tweet, but he replaced it with with this. Daily Wire are fine. So he retweets the video from the Daily Wire, like the response video. <laughs> A real man of principles there. He's like, Steven's got some making some pretty good points here. Then his boss comes over and says, we don't like that. He's like, right away, sir. Right away. And if you look in the comments, people point this out. Uh, The Daily Wire guy says he doesn't tweet for you guys, yet you deleted the original tweet on the matter and put up this one instead. Curious. Mmm. So we're really engaged in some big tech censorship here. But uh, I guess to patch things up, a couple days later, you know, we we got Mickey Peterson out there. 
the master conflict resolution expert, Michaela J. Peterson Esquire at your service. Given dad is signed with DW, yeah. I thought I'd comment a bit about the contract as I run my dad's brand and help negotiate the contract. The dad signed as well as tell you what working with DW. Was this a hostage video? Why are there so, so many cuts here? Okay. Let's get Michaela out there. Let's, Mika let's get Michaela out there. Smooth things over. Get out there, smooth things over. I made a mistake. The more the merrier. There should be more conservative platforms out there, but that's no reason to tear really? each other down should and create be? drama, in my opinion. I thought I should address okay. his insinuation, though, that people working at DW are locked into contracts they don't like, taken advantage of and forced uh -huh. to do whatever DW says, because that makes my dad look naive and incompetent, of which he is neither. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, Michaela. Did you see him wandering around those ruins? Did you see that? I'm an ancient warrior. I'd also like to address the fact that dad retweeted Steven's video to add to the Oh boy. Oh boy. Toilet. Here we go. Drama. <laughs> okay. Because Steven sent it around and dad does that to support Steven because we like him. But when dad found out what the video was, he deleted the tweet. Okay. DW actually asked him not to delete it because they said it would look like they had <laughs> asked him to delete it. But uh -huh. at that point, he'd already deleted it. So that's the story of the tweet. Anyway, let me explain a bit about the deal. <laughs> Yeah, Michaela definitely smoothing everything over here. You know, smoothing this. She's smoothing. She's smoothing everything over by saying, "Yeah, like he he doesn't know. Like to his millions of followers who hang on his every word, you know, on Twitter and everywhere, he doesn't know if it's just some dumb right wing crap. He retweets it. But then when he found out that he could get in trouble, then that he deleted it. You know, oh, that's something I get in trouble for. Delete. So." The two things we've learned, this, she totally smoothed it over. Totally smoothed it over. He pays like zero attention to what he's retweeting to all these people. And if he can get in trouble, then it's a uh, self-censor. I like that she keeps saying dad too. Dad, just dad. Okay. Because Steven sent it around and dad does that to support Steven. Our dad, everybody's dad. He's everybody's dad. You know, hey dad, get down off of those ruins. They're going to kick us out again. Also in just two days... This video has half a million views. Yeah, wow. So, and, and she did this all on her own. All on her own, without the help of anybody. You know, self-made. Self-made hierarchy bootstraps. I love this response, too. I think, what the, I think there's one thing in which we can all agree. Your dad is a great man. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so she goes on and on and on defending the company that backed up a dump truck of money to her dad and her. I work for my dad. I work for my dad, you know? I, I get this. Um, but anyway, so she goes on and on about how awesome they are and how, you know, no, Steven Crowder's wrong, man. Steven Crowder, it's shocking, shocking. Steven Crowder's wrong and the company that backed up that dump truck of money, they're actually right. This is about principles, man. Uh, but then she goes on to outline why all this, why all this is so bad. All this infighting is so bad because it, it disrupts the mission that they're on. Check out this amazing mission. Anyway, I think conservatives okay. should be working together to fight common enemies. The woke crowd that's taking right. over the world, destroying Canada, yep. trying to stop us from eating meat, wow. confusing our kids, fighting capitalism, freaking <laughs> people out about the climate, keeping people scared and indoors, uh -huh. burning down areas and cities, destroying California and other liberal cities, limiting freedom of speech, forcing vaccines on people. That needs to be fought. We need to stop this, all this fighting, because we need to fight for our, ma our amazing causes which are transphobia and anti-vax hysteria. <laughs> it's shocking with those values that somebody would just do anything to extract as much of that as possible. Oh, that was shocking. Okay, so that's that. Smoothed over. Nice and smooth. The other thing Jordy Peterson has talked about this week, past couple days, is one of his favorite topics, which is cl uh, climate change is fake. And he still does this thing of like, oh, you know, people who say that climate change is real are, they're mean, you know, they're authoritarian. They won't listen to any other views, you know, they won't listen to any other views. But Jordan Peterson only retweets and only talks to people who, he finds these guys who like, oh, I run a think tank. You know, I run a think tank that's financed by fossil fuel billionaires. And yeah, it's fake. It's fake. What does this guy say? If you have a warmer world with more CO2, it's more a tropical world. Like guys who are saying things like that. Okay, so along those same lines with just the laziest, 
stupidest uh, climate content. This this clip is pretty. He retweets this. He retweeted this. This is from something called Rebel News, and Rebel News is I think it's Canadian, but it's basically like if the Daily if you put the Daily Wire in the microwave for to, you know twenty or thirty minutes. How many times did you rehearse it? Because it looks staged. You can is it true? Okay. How many times did you re rehearse your arrest, Greta? <laughs> How many times did you okay. film your arrest, and why was it staged that way? Greta, considering you've not spent much time in school, how do you know so much about climate change? Man, these guys think more about Greta Thunberg than anybody. You know, I'm a climate activist. Yeah, I travel the world, you know, b protesting fossil fuels or whatever. You don't think about Greta Thunberg as much as these guys, Jordy and these guys do. <laughs> Greta, as a real journalist, is climate change as real your, as your arrest? Greta, how far are you willing to go? You're willing to break the law Will you renounce hey, violence? Careful, careful Will you renounce violence, Greta? Or do you support Antifa? You've worn an Antifa shirt before. Are you in favor of Antifa? <laughs> okay. Greta, how did you get here today? What was your climate footprint in traveling here? What? <laughs> <laughs> What's your it's, it's 20 minutes of this. Jordan Peterson retweeted this. 20 minutes of a 60-year-old man and then like a, you know, a younger man who that 60-year-old man pays just sort of following <laughs> following this uh, woman around, saying, hey, I saw on YouTube that you did something. <laughs> Greta, avoid my questions if climate change is a con. Greta, what do you think about this? <laughs> well, I think that... <laughs> Jordan Peterson retweeted... I'm uh, reminding you, Jordan Peterson retweeted this. Greta, who would you say is the biggest threat to climate change, whether that's one person, an organization, or a country? Okay. Me. And why would you say you're the biggest threat to climate change? <laughs> well, to the world going in a disastrous trajectory towards the world being damaged through climate change. Who do you think is the worst culprit? Me. Why you? <laughs> is it your hundreds of private jets? Yes. It'd be really funny to sit down with the Georgester. You know, Jordo. Hey, Jordo, you know. We'll get him a poutine or whatever, whatever they eat in Canada. A goose, a fine fat hen or whatever they eat. Whatever you guys eat up there. A snow, a snow cake? I don't know. We'll sit down together and we'll go through his tweets and be like, what did you mean when you retweeted this? What were, what were you getting at? What do we learn from this? You know, a 60-year-old uh, guy and his uh, little uh, cohort. Following this girl around, following this teenage girl around. What do we, what do we learn from this video, Jordarino? Jordster. No Jordanary love, I call him. I guess, I don't know, is Jordan Peterson just an adult troll? If you look at the comments of these posts there, all the re replies are like this. Proud of them, question mark. This was horrible to watch. I don't agree with everything she says, nor am I a fan of her. But this was just a bunch of old guys pestering a child who responded with sarcastic remarks. I got annoyed just watching this. Can't imagine how she felt. <laughs> to see all our footage from all our different interviews and all our different scrums, go to wefreports.com. If you think this okay, kind of journalism crap. that you've just watched is unique and valuable, and I think it is. Uh, you're the one. You're the one. Yeah, well, you and Jordy. Please chip I guess. in a little bit to our crowdfunding. We brought a crew of seven people with us from Australia, okay. Canada, and the UK. We flew economy class all the way. <laughs> do, but if you can help us cover those do costs, this? you can do. Oh hell yeah, brother! Hell yeah, brothers and sisters! Check this beautiful Schmidt out right here. This is from one of my favorite YouTube channels. It's called Millionaire Mentor, and it's probably run by bots. You know, it, it looks and feels very much like a robot runs it and it's inhuman but uh check this check this amazing video out i can't believe i can't believe this is actually happening <laughs> i can't believe this is actually happening jordan peterson from two days ago hold on to your underwear because it's about to get real it really hasn't worked that well so not but i have my doubts that it would be me because people have been trying to re-educate me for a long time and it really hasn't worked that <sighs> well so, oh, and that's generally Jordy. because I, I don't say things that I haven't investigated right to the bottom. Uh, yeah, unless you're retweeting Steven Crowder, or you're retweeting something where old men are following around this teenage girl, you know, borderline harassing her. 
Other than that, it's right down to the bottom. I guess it's tweet. So tweeting is different than saying, you know, when you're tweeting it to what, two million, three million people, uh, however many lost souls follow the Pied Piper of goofiness. Uh, that's not saying, that's tweeting. So I got you on a technicality there. <laughs> oh boy, okay, so we're moving along. We're moving through the Hall of Geordie. Two of the big pillars are climate change is fake, and I don't like gay people and transgender people. So he tweets, children, so he's doing his, he's goose-stepping around, doing his little, uh, I hate transgender people thing. Children not infrequently act out the unconscious pathology of their parents. Quote, I'm a girl, mommy, unquote, from a boy can mean, quote, you would have preferred a girl, mommy. And I've picked that up by watching you like a hawk, which all, ch oh my God, the way he writes and talks is so annoying and insufferable. So he's doing his anti-trans thing. He's like, oh, this is just a, you know, a misunderstanding. Transgender people, that's just a misunderstanding. So he retweets and comments on himself and he writes, uh, for, uh, this is for reference, read Satan's silence to see how this happened with the ritual satanic abuse daycare panic in the 80s and 90s. <laughs> A chilling account of similar psychogenic epidemic spread not least by children reflecting their parents' delusions. He's talking about the satanic panic. Let's, let's just read about the satanic panic. The satanic panic is a moral panic consisting of over 12,000 unsubstantiated claims of satanic ritual abuse starting in the United States in the 1980s, spreading throughout many parts of the world by the late 1990s and persisting today. I, someone in his comments put this better than I could, so I'll just read this. It's hilarious you don't recognize the analogy fits the anti-trans panic you spread almost daily. It makes you money, though. Your anti-trans content gets the most clicks. Oh, yeah, and also not to mention the fact that they're the, the satanic panic is still going on because dopes and idiots like Jordan Peterson. Satan is in the classroom. These teachers are satanic. What he's what he tweeted is literally going on from his his uh, demented side of things. Yeah, the satanic panic. Oh, man. Wouldn't that be crazy if there are a bunch of people freaking out? about people in schools, if only that still existed, that would be so crazy. In some weird effort to abolish public schools, so that, you know, so one of Jordy's billionaires, one of the billionaires that funds Jordy and all these guys could... Well, fine, whatever. You know, oh, we've been laughing at this guy's expense. <laughs> Making fun of this guy, who I, at this point, honestly, I think might be satirical. But guys, god damn it, guys. You know what, though? Be prepared to get your blown out be pre be prepared to get those little old navy trousers blown right out of the blown right out of the window because of the fact that check this check this video out okay this is called you are closer to believing in god than you think okay all right this is a big one jordy so this one better really get down to some bullshit do you believe go. and therefore act out the proposition that slavery and tyranny is wrong okay and if the answer to that is Yes, well, congratulations uh -huh. to you, uh -huh. because at least in principle, you're being guided by the spirit that pulls people out of slavery and that, and that opposes tyranny. And we might say, well, that's good in some transcendent sense. And then we might say that God is the sum total of all things that are good in some transcendent sense. That's the, uh, you know, that's the other thing with this guy. He's a real lazy bastard. You know, I, I, I guarantee he... It really feels like he's just kind of, I'm just doing some jazz on the spot. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, already religious audience, probably in the United States. Uh, you know, if you believe in anything good, then God, then God. <laughs> Slavery bad? Huh? God. You know, I mean, do, do a little bit. You could probably do something that would make sense with the, with this kind of religious framing, but... Let's put a little more effort into it. God damn you, Jordy. These videos are always moving and inspiring to me, and the comments are even more so. I thank the Lord every day for a man like Jordan Peterson to be beside all of us. Could you imagine Jordan Peterson literally being beside you? You know? Where are we going? <laughs> like, it'd be like driving with your parents, you know? Where are we going? What is that? Oh, be careful! <laughs> 
Oh no, I'm shaking. I'm shaking. I think it's a vaccine side effect. Oh, I'm shaking. So there he is, guys, just checking in with the pride of Canada. Jordan J. Peel. Jordan J. Peel. Jordan J. Dieterman. He's pandering to try to suck money from his audience. He's sucking around. He's being weird. Jordan Peterson, you idiot, you. You're always fun to look at because you're always doing something stupid, you idiot. Guys, let's not, okay. Let's not go into a whole thing about what day of the week it is. Okay, it's our most hated. It's our, mm. Mm. Cut the crap, guys. Enough is enough. Hope you guys have a good week and try to have some fun, have a good time. And, you know, we'll laugh at some idiots. We'll laugh at some buffoons. Love you guys. Thanks for watching this. And, it all, and as always, we like to say bye 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 bye, bye 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 bye. Hey guys. Guess what? You're not even getting the whole show. If you want every episode and a whole bunch of other sh subscribe on Patreon. Subscribe on Patreon for as little as two bones. Just click the stupid little link below the video in the comments. See right there. There you go. Click it and that. Yep. <laughs> When you become a patron for as little as two bones, you get the Tuesday, Thursday, patron-only episodes. Ah! You also get the weekly book a -blega show where we talk about important books. The questions and comments th th thing where you can ask questions and make comments and all this crap. And the weekly behind-the-scenes show. All for less than the price of a rancid Charleston chew. And for only 25 putrid little dollars, you can become a producer. That's right, support the show and get your name up here. Look at these people. Look at these, these people, it make the show possible, okay? God. I mean, without these beautiful people, this show goes straight into the dumpster. A rotten, you know, just wet, disgusting dumpster, you know, behind a restaurant. So it's, there's old milk in there. That's where this show ends up without these people. Is that what you want? Okay, I guess it's what- Okay, no, I guess it's what you want. I'll just leave. Nope, 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 it's done. It's too late. Okay? Okay? Here we go. Here's the dump truck. Here's the dump truck come to pick up the show. This is what would happen with no producers. Thank you.